So if you've ever had trauma or adversity and you really feel like you would love to turn those into triumphs, and a lot of that comes from our mindset, you are going to enjoy this episode today. I am very happy to have on my show Tammy Haldeman, and she is really an uplifter. And I know that sounds pretty vague, and you're probably like, what is an uplifter, Angie? But that's why she's here today, to tell us how she's taken those those traumatic moments in her life and turned them into moments of clarity and goodness and actually taking it in places that I was really surprised. I mean, she's not only an author and a podcaster, she's also an app developer. But I'm going to let her go into a lot of those things, but I'm excited to share, um, actually learn from her today about how she's maneuvered through the the tragedy and the trauma into goodness, because I just had this conversation with a good friend of mine last night who has experienced trauma in her early days as a child, and she's realizing today, as a person in her 50s, how they are still lingering and still causing issues. And it's amazing to think that there's a lot of us who experience that same thing. So let me not keep jabbing and jabbing on today. Let me um, have Tammy introduce herself and share her experiences and how she got to this point and what Tammy, if you want to tell us, you know, a little bit about your background and what got you here today, and also share what drove you to write the, I think you have two books out, right? Right. Yes. And thank you for having me. So I'd like to hear about your books as well and the content that you shared in there. So take it away, Tammy. (laughs) Thanks so much for having me, Angie. I really appreciate it. Um, So I originally wrote a book called Take My Advice. I don't use it anyway. And... That that book, um, although it's kind of a satirical title, um, it was my therapy when I was working through some pretty tough stuff. So in 2005, my sister was diagnosed with ovarian cancer, my and my marriage was ending. I my I filed for divorce, and so that's a lot to go through. Um, to very traumatic and hard experiences um, all in one year. And, you know, there's just so many things you could unpack there. <laughs> it's amazing. I mean, I could go on and on just about that, the, the loss, different kinds of loss, everything. But in any case, I'll, I'll go on. Um, then in 08, my sister passed. In 09, my mom passed. And in 12, my, my father passed. So in four short years, I lost basically my whole family. And then my older sister and I are estranged um, since my father's passing. So I lost my whole family in about four years, four or five years. And it, it was a struggle. But, I, you know, I use therapy as writing, and that's how the books were born. Um, Take My Advice, I Don't Use It Anyway, is kind of a book about, I don't want to call it self-help. I call it a growth book. It's a book about how to get through the tough stuff and come out with a positive attitude or hang on to your positive attitude or get back to your positive attitude. Um, It's through, you know, my dad always taught us lessons, life lessons through story. And so he would tell us a story. I'll give you one real quick one um, for an example. My grandfather had in the, they were farmers. And one of the neighbors came and borrowed a piece of farm equipment. And when he brought it back, he said, how much do I owe you? And my grandpa said, you know, don't worry about it. I'll probably have to borrow something from you one day. And when he brought it back, the piece of equipment was broken and my grandpa had to weld it and fix it. And so then my grandpa did come upon a time when he had to borrow something. And so he asked him, hey, you know, what do I owe you? And he said, $20. <laughs> and that was back in the day when $20 was a lot of money. And so when they left, my dad said, boy, he said, if he ever wants to borrow anything again, I'm really going to sock it to him, you know. And then my grandpa said, no, you're not, because then you would be no better than he is. Ooh. So we that's, that's not. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
that's not who we are. And so those stories is how I learn my life lessons of the person that I should be when I grow up. And so that's kind of how the book is. It's stories about what I learned and how to look at things maybe with humor in some instances or growth in some instances. So that's the first book. The second book is called um, Do More, Be More, Lessons for Living Life Uplifted. And it's more of a journalistic approach, sort of to the same idea, but there it asks questions so you can jot down answers and you know it jogs your mind. In fact, I'd like to recreate it and make it into a journal. Um, so that's that's down the road. I'll do that someday too. <laughs> I think that it is hard. It's hard to rise above the feeling that that it, you know that feeling of I just want to be angry. Uh, you know, I've been mistreated. This is not fair. How, how did you? I mean, I feel like you're essentially become like an orphan, right? In in your later years, you're losing all of your family. How did you find the strength to not dwell in that negativity? I was really blessed that I had people in my life that were the kind of people that I, I say all the time, my sister taught me how to live and she taught me how to die. I look at her and she never, she never asked why she got her, got cancer. She was always grateful for everything, always, to the very last day, um, things that she could be grateful for her in her life. She focused on that. Um, she was the kind of person that would, and my, and my mom and dad were the same way, I guess, but it was just amplified by watching her go through this and see her with this great faith and with this great attitude and with this great focus on the good things. A group of us girls would get together um, once a month and um, I, I don't even know how you want to say it. If, if you want to call it a heat, we called it our, we called ourselves a healing circle and we wanted to provide healing for her. And we would call upon whatever it was that spoke to whoever was there. If you wanted to call it God, the universe, those who have gone before us, whatever. And we would just say, you know, help her get through this. <clears throat> One particular time she was at the, the healing circle. She wanted to come. And it was when it was her, time, her turn, we would go around in a circle and speak. And when it was her turn to speak, she expressed nothing but gratitude for us <laughs> and how much we had helped her on her journey. I'm going to start crying. <laughs> and, you know, you can't be around that kind of power and positivity without looking at it and going, who am I to not be positive and grateful? Yeah. It's easy for us to focus on negative. It's just easier. And I, I'm a big believer in gratitude. I mean, my show is called The Grateful Redhead. You know, I'm, yes. I, I try to practice gratitude and being grateful. But, you know, I too have had, I lost my father way too young and I handled it terribly. Um, I know that, you know, you listen to the episode that I did with, uh, Dr. Satara Vishnu and my experience with him in holistic medicine that honestly changed my life by, by finally healing that trauma that happened on the inside. And for the most part, I think that society, we only look at the damage on the outside, Right. So if right. we can't see that physical injury or harm, then, oh, you look fine, you know, buck up or, you know, rub some dirt on it or, you know, this whole <laughs> Walk it off. thing. And a lot of times it does take honoring those feelings, letting ourselves feel those feelings and letting it move through. I, I'm in awe of your sister being able to experience that level of gratitude through the very end. I mean, 
you know, I always thought I would be here for a hundred years. Like that was very much my attitude as a, you know, young child, but, oh, we've got a hundred years. But, you know, as we get older, we realize that that's not the case. And so it really is heartfelt to, to, that I feel you are very lucky to have that experience with her and that she, like you said, she showed you how to die and what a gift that is because not many of us get that gift. It's actually very fearful. I mean, I'm, I'm more fearful of dying and not being able to do all the things that I want to do. I'm, I'm a doer and I want to make sure that I can try all these things that life has to offer. So it's a, it's a little bit scary sometimes, you know, are there other moments when you were like maybe one-on-one with your sister that she shared something with you that has also stuck with you that, you know, you would, you would feel comfortable to share here? Well, and this is in my book and the whole reason for the second book title, but it's still very powerful. And I think people can take away from it. We were watching the movie, the dreamer, I think it's called, or maybe it's just dreamer. It's about a little girl who her father raced horses she ended up saving the horse's life because she wouldn't let her dad kill it. And it ended up winning a race just because this little girl believed in it. Well, one day when my sister, her name was Robin, was having a particularly, she was feeling good enough to want to do something or be around people, but not good enough to go out of the house. So we rented that movie and we watched it. And at one point she looked at me And she just said, doesn't it just make you want to do more and be more? And I just was so struck by that, you know. She could have just as easily been the type of person that would have said, you know, well, I'm never going to get to do, you know, more. But no, she looked at me, doesn't it just make you want to do more and be more? And I thought, yeah, it does, but not because of the movie, <laughs> because of you. So it was a it was an amazing thing, and that that was one of the takeaways that has carried me through some of the the things that I've gone through in my healing, and why I wrote the book, and how I think it could help other people. And I think too, I just I just saw this the other day, and it and I posted it on social media, and it said. What if your legacy is not what you leave behind, but what you do today? Wow, that's deep. It's powerful. It's powerful. You know, when you think, oh, I want to leave this to my kids, or I want to leave that to my kids, or, you know, we, we all have to think about those things that... What if, what if this is it? What if today is the day that you're going to be remembered for? Dr. Seuss has a, I'm a big quote girl, so forgive me, but he has a quote that says exactly that, you know, um, behave as if today is the day you will be remembered. And I met Dr. Seuss. He is so wise. He was a genius. (laughs) Yes, definite genius for sure. So you mentioned earlier that the writing for you was like therapeutic, you know, was it after you experienced all of that, I, I would call it trauma, right? Over those of, of losing so many family members in a short period of time. Was it after all of that, that you decided to, to write the books? It was during and after. It was before, during, and after. I've always been a person who wrote, uh, but never, you know, I envisioned myself being a novelist. (laughs) I wasn't going to be a growth book person or a self-help, you know, what did I know? (laughs) But, But as I started working through it and talking to friends, and I said, you know, I think I'm going to write this book. And I have some amazing people in my life, (laughs) really amazing friends and family that said, yeah, I think you should. You know, sometimes somebody will say they're going to do something and you're just like, "Mm, yeah, okay. (laughs) But no, they encouraged me. And I was writing the book, Take My Advice, I Don't Use It Anyway. I didn't know that was the title. I didn't know. But I was just writing about life experiences and working through it. and 
it was it was basically like a journal at the time and then i just did the sweet and condensed version for the book but sometimes i feel like it was just one of those um, moments where you're writing and you're so in the zone it's kind of like athletes when they're running and they say they you know don't even feel like they're running you know they just feel like they're moving through space and i i just think that it's kind of like that with writing for me where sometimes i write and then i go back and read it and i'm like wow i, I didn't even remember writing that that was pretty good <laughs> those are nice moments to have yeah have you gotten feedback from people who have read your book yes i have i have I've, not so much with do more be more but i definitely have gotten uh feedback from take my advice i don't use it anyway and how much it touched them and they felt like they were just i call it a girlfriend to girlfriend chat with a one-sided girlfriend to girlfriend chat it's not just for girls but that's kind of how it is you know you get on the i used to get on the phone with some of my friends and we talk you know solve all the world's problems in one phone conversation <laughs> that's kind of how this is you're just chatting with a girlfriend while you're reading the book and i write very much like i speak <laughs> I had, I had read a book uh one time and i i it escapes me who it's by right now but anyway she wrote like i speak and i'm like oh i didn't know you could do that you know i it kind of freed me up to pour myself into the book even more because i think that again is some standard that we have been told along the way somewhere or maybe inferred it doesn't even have to be that somebody told us that but you know, when, when you think of people as like an author, you know, that they're very knowledgeable and have this great skill of writing and stuff. But more and more, I feel like authenticity trumps that because we want to be able to relate to people and I want to be able to understand where they're coming from and hear it more in their voice, not some polished, canned version of you know, their thoughts and ideas and stories. So I like that you said that, that you're writing it in your own words and how you speak, because I, I feel like there's probably people who are going to listen to this episode about, okay, how can I turn my, you know, my traumatic moments into something that will uplift me and, and that I can turn into some good in my life. But they might feel struggled with trying to write out their thoughts because it, they feel like it has to be polished or be good or, um, you know, be like an award-winning writer in some way. But um, it doesn't come from that at all, does it? It just poured out. Sounds like it just poured out from your heart, which is why you related to the sports, you know, the, uh, somebody who doesn't really even know what's happening at the moment. It's just coming out. Do you Absolutely. have another? One of the, do you have an, Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say one of the kind of, I don't know if you want to call it chapter, but one of the titles in Do More, Be More is Do You. And it's uh, the first line is Be fearless, Fearlessly Authentic. And, you know, it talks a little bit about how um, we don't, we tell people that all the time. We tell young people that all the time, but we don't tell them how to do it how how can you be yourself because the pressure the expectation the inferred um standard is to be somebody else and it's it's really hard you have to be pretty strong to be yourself in today's world and we see it all the time right where people are trying to be themselves and they are literally being shot because of it they're really yes, yes. being hurt and harmed. And these are, it's not fair that in one, in one ear, they're hearing be your authentic self. And in the next ear, they're hearing, you know, injure your death to a friend who was trying to just be themselves or a family member. Um, I think this is a really good segue into the app that you developed. Will you share with us about what that is and how that came to you? Absolutely. Um, so interestingly enough, the idea came to me while I was working out on my sister's birthday. And it just happened to be her birthday um, two years ago. 
when I got the idea. And the idea about the app came to me and I thought this was a great idea. And then I shared it with my now husband and he said, yeah, that's a great idea. You have to do something with that. And more and more intricacies and um, enhancements just kept flooding into me to of how the app should work. And what it is, it's called Your Shield. It's available on the App Store and only available on iOS right now. But the way the app works is you record a word and you, you put the word in. So you program the word in that you will say, you program in your alert partners, and they're the ones who will come to your aid if you say the first word. And the first word will start record an audio recording and start sending your location to your alert partners that you have chosen the user has chosen the second word is so people can come to your aid and i'm going to use the example because we were just talking about that not being able to be yourself and right now the world is bullying is a big thing it's it happens way too often and when i a few weeks before I got the idea. There was a girl in our state who was only 10 years old and she was being bullied and she wrote her mom a note and she went off and killed herself. 10 years old. I mean, nothing in this world should be so bad that a 10 year old would kill themselves. Um, so anyway, I think that broke my heart and yet it broke it open to be to listen for the idea because I was never a person who sat around and listened or to who thought about bullying or kidnapping or, I mean, you heard it on the news, you were exposed to it, but it wasn't something that you thought, I got to do something about this. I got to do something about this. But, and I wasn't, certainly wasn't a person who thought about developing an app. <laughs> I wasn't an app developer. But when I got this idea, I just thought it's too important to not do something with it. So I envision a child being bullied. I envision him saying the word. Maybe he says the word popsicle. And that word triggers a message that's sent to his mom or dad or counselor or neighbor, whatever. And they come to his aid because they see his location and they can track him. And he has evidence that that guy was being a bully because he has the recording that he can play back. Um, the second word that you record is also of your choosing, but it sends a message to your alert partner saying, my life is in danger, call, call emergency services immediately and give them my location. And it gives the coordinates. So it's, you know, I'm looking at it being helpful to people in the situation of domestic violence, sexual harassment, um, bullying, kidnapping, human trafficking. Um, a girl was just, I just heard this news story. She was at a sporting event in, I believe it was Texas with her parents. She went to the restroom and never came back. 16 years old. They ended up finding her 10 days later in a motel in, I think, Oklahoma. And if she had had your shield, possibly it would have triggered something to say, my life is in danger and this is where I'm going. And maybe they would have found her sooner than 10 days. Thank God they found her when they did, but maybe they would have found her even sooner. Maybe they would have found her before she even got out of the parking lot. What a powerful app. I, I'm almost speechless by it in, the, in two things, that, that we don't have something like that available almost installed automatically on phones with the way that the world is today and we're experiencing a lot of what you just talked about and and secondly that it came to you with such clarity on your sister's birthday which i'm, I'm always a big person who believes in a lot of those you know signs and symbols and things but you were also working out which to me Sometimes those moments of clarity are when we are not engaged in thinking and overthinking and multitasking and working. And, and, I, and I think that we, we can forget that because we are trying to get so much accomplished in our life. I, even last night, 
I've been trying to work on an issue, work out a problem that I'm having. And I went in my hot tub last night and I, because I can't multitask in there, I can't do anything but just sit there and enjoy the feelings. It came to me like a flash of light. And I was repeating it out loud because I don't have pen and paper in the tub. So I was repeating it out loud. I was saying it. I was working it out. And when I came inside, my husband said, who are you talking to out there? (laughs) Like just myself. But it's, it's those moments that we allow, almost allow our minds to just be free and not having these, you know, pre-planned thoughts or actions and stuff. So that's really great. Um, how do you get the awareness of your app out there? Well, I'm telling you, Angie, that's what I'm trying to do right now. It's, it's harder than you think. Um, you know, I just, I just want to get the word out. I'm asking to be on podcasts. Um, I will eventually uh, advertise, but it takes money. I'm reaching out to groups like domestic violence groups and um, sexual harassment groups. Indigenous women are being kidnapped on a phenomenal amount of, it's huge. It's a huge problem. So I reached out to them, but I'm telling you, it's, it's really sad because one of the things that we can't focus on is the negative. But I'm telling you, it's so sad because people think that you're a scammer. People think that you're just trying to get their personal information when you reach out to them. And so I'm, I'm struggling. I really, I'm struggling to get the word out because um, too many people think that I'm just one of those people that sneaks into your email and, you know, gets your personal information or reaches out to you for a, a negative reason. And they don't realize that I'm just trying to help. That is really good to hear because I feel like anybody who's listening right now, like immediately in my head, I'm like, okay, I know a couple teachers. Like I want to tell them about this because kids are vulnerable and it's happening more, obviously that, you know, we hear about it all the time, sadly. So I feel like if each one of us who's listening to your story today could tell somebody who is in has some communication with children or people who are vulnerable, it could save somebody's life. And all we're doing is just sharing the fact that there's this powerful app. Is it free to download? It is free to download. You get the first, I believe it's seven days. It's either seven or 10 days. I'm not even sure because that was in the developer's hands. So a week to 10 days of free, and then you subscribe to it. But it's only $4.99 a month subscription. So, I mean, I wanted to make it so anybody could afford it. Um, and then there's also a families and friend discount. So it's $24.99 if you have six or more people. So, I mean, literally anybody, anybody that can afford a phone can afford it. Fantastic. You have, and, and I can only assume app development is not cheap. I, I've never developed one. Like you said, you were not an app developer either. So you had to, what was that process like of seeking out somebody to actually build an app? Well, it's kind of another crazy thing that happened. I was actually scheduled to talk to Dane Maxwell from Start From Zero podcast. He has a book, bestseller. Anyway, I was going to talk to him about monetizing my podcast. And (laughs) that was my meeting that I had set up on Monday. I got the idea on Friday, and I was supposed to meet with him on Monday. So... I told him a little bit about the idea. I want, didn't want to give him the whole idea because I didn't want someone to steal it. Quite frankly, I wanted to do it, you know, and he kind of shot it down at first. You know, he was like, yeah, yeah, there's a million good ideas every day, you know, type of thing. But then at the end, he said, find three people that you really trust, not like your husband but somebody who's going to be truthful that you can trust to tell this idea to the whole idea. So as I got off the phone, I immediately typed out the entire idea on an email and I sent it to him and I titled it because I trust you. And he read through it, got back to me immediately said, this is a phenomenal idea. 
Dane was bullied as a child. It's no secret. Um, and he said, you got to get this out there. And it's like, I, I keep going back to bullying, but it's not a bullying app. It could be for anyone. You're walking to your car late at night, activate your shield and you have it. My niece was going to university and she was sexually harassed by a guy that was teaching her. She's going to going to school for radiology, teaching her what she was supposed to be learning. And he's sexually harassing her while he's doing it. So, I mean, had she, she had your shield, but had she activated it before she went in there, she could have said her word and he would have never known that he was being recorded. I mean, there's just so many different instances where this could come into play. A girl, a woman could be being abused by her husband, say the word, and her neighbor comes across and the hall and knocks on the door and saves her. I mean, I have so many idea maybe it's because i write stories but i have so many ideas in my head of how this can come to someone's aid and save their life and we just need to get it out there so people have it it's kind of like i keep equating it to if you have a car and you get a flat tire you don't need your jack until you have the flat tire and that the app is kind of like that you're not going to need it until you need it so if you have it then you'll have it when you need it it's a great way to look at it because the world seems crazy. Um, you know, some days much crazier than others. Uh, I do my best not to watch the news every day. I can't really take all that in on myself. I'm a little too sensitive to take it all in, but this is a reality. And, you know, any of us could be susceptible to bad people. So I, I commend you really for taking the time, your time, your effort, your money to get something like this out there. And it would be amazing if some larger organization would be willing to fund you and support getting it out there because the app store is so full of so many apps that I could understand that it would be hard to, you know, kind of get your voice about this app out there. You know, there's so yeah. much noise out there when it comes to marketing and, Thing. So, man, I, I hope that the right person is listening today and that they reach out to me or to you and, you know, that this thing does blow up because it could be so valuable in saving numerous lives in so many ways. So thank you, Tammy, for, for seeing it through. It would have been really easy to say, this is going to cost me a lot of time and money and I think I'll just you know, go over here and live my life and not worry about that. So thank you for doing that and thinking, you know, about others. It's really great. Thank you so much. I, again, was blessed with people in my life when I told my husband about it. He didn't hesitate. You know, we depleted savings <laughs> to do this. And it was frustrating. And it was two years. And it was getting up. My developers are in Switzerland and India. So they're eight to, you know, eight hours ahead of me. So it's getting up in the middle of the night to talk to them, communicate with them back and forth on an almost daily basis to make sure it was the way that it's supposed to be. So, you know, I more than once my developers asked me, when do you sleep? <laughs> You're like, when this is over, I'll take a really good nap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, Tammy, thank you so much for making time to be on the show today. Um, you know, the Grateful Redhead podcast is about showcasing people who are making a difference for themselves or for others or the world. And you clearly are hitting all three of those points. So I want to thank you for taking time and joining us today. Is there anything else that you have going on that you might want to share with the listeners? Uh just my, I guess I have a podcast called Tammy for a change so they can listen to my podcast as well. I'm hoping to have you on. Oh, well, <laughs> thank you. Is that an invite? Yes, it is. Why, thank you. I'll take you up on that. That would be great. <laughs> and let people, know yeah, where they can, let people know where they can get your book, contact you if they've got any, you know, support for the app and uh, just, you know, say the app name again. Sure. It's your shield on the App Store, only available on iOS right now. You can also go to the Shield Me Home, all one word, shieldmehome.com website. Um, my books are available on upliftuniverse.com. 
and um, I'm uh, what else? Oh, and I'm Tammy at UpliftUniverse.com. So. Well, that's great. So thank you again for being on the show. And, you know, for those who are listening to this episode today, if you like what you hear and you know somebody in your life that's cool like Tammy doing really interesting things to make a change, please put me in contact with them. I would love the opportunity to invite them on and explore what's going on in their life as well. So I'm Angie Ringler, your host of the Grateful Redhead podcast. And until we meet again, please be kind to each other and love one another. Peace out.